The purpose of this presentation is to explain why receiving should always be included in your process FEMAs. The presentation will be in two different sections. First of all, we're going to go over the reasons people give for not including receiving in the process FEMA and why they are not valid. We will also give you the only time receiving should not be included in a process FEMA. There's four typical reasons people give for not including receiving in the process FEMA. The first is, is that the published documentation that everybody generally accepts as standards says not to include receiving. The second is that there is a FEMA rule that states that when you perform a process FEMA, you are to assume that all steps prior to the one you are working on have been done correctly. The third reason people give for not doing receiving in a process FEMA is they say their suppliers have passed a supplier audit or PPAP. The final reason that we hear for people saying they don't want to include receiving in the process FEMA is that there's no history of the supplier sending out of spec product. Let's look at the first reason, published FEMA documentation. The very early FEMA manuals, SAE, AIAG, stated that you should assume that everybody who sends you product is sending you that product within specification. It's interesting to note, however, that the last versions that were published now state that if you know there are issues with incoming materials or parts, you can, you can include receiving in your process FEMA. Regardless of the position <clears throat> taken by the creators of these documentation, uh, the one thing I could never understand is that when I would ask people who believe that they shouldn't include receiving in the process FEMA, if they believe their suppliers always sent with spec product, they would all, without exception, tell me that no, they're not always perfect. I then would ask them, why then would you say they are perfect just because a FEMA document told you to do so. The second reason people give for not including receiving is the FEMA rule that states that you're supposed to assume that every step prior to the one that you are working on has been done correctly. Let's examine that rule. The purpose of the process FEMA is to assess the risk that the process poses to the company. Any step in the process that can create a failure mode creates risk for the company. What the rule says, as I previously stated, is that you are to assume that every step prior to you has been done correctly. The reason you want to do that is that when you do a process FEMA, on a particular step, on a particular failure mode, you are capturing the risk that that particular step is contributing to the overall risk of the process to the company. If you then take that failure mode that you've already assessed the risk of and show it as a failure cause of the next step, not doing what it's supposed to do, you've double counted the risk due to that particular failure mode, and you don't want to do that. So the reason the rule exists is to prevent this double counting. The reason receiving is not covered by the rule is that receiving is the first step of the process. And since receiving can create failure modes, you must include it in your process FEMA. The third reason people give for not including receiving is they state that the supplier has passed the supplier audit or supplier has passed PPAP. 
let's look at what passing a supplier audit or passing PPAP means. The only thing that passing the audit or passing PPAP means that f is that for a given period of time, supplier has proven that they had, can produce with inspect product. What the supplier audit or PPAP does not guarantee is that the supplier will continue to do so. It's interesting to note that when you do capability studies uh, on supplier output that most companies during normal operations require a CPK of 1.33. However, during PPEP studies, they require a PPK of 1.67 because they know during that study due to the limited time, all the variation that normally the supplier will see in their process will not have been experienced and there is an expected deterioration over time. The fourth reason given for not including receiving a supplier is that there's no history of a supplier sending out of spec product. The interesting thing is if you can truly state that position and you have fact, you have to have followed all the steps necessary to do a process FEMA on the receiving step. The first thing you have to do is you have to identify the out of spec conditions that the supplier can send you. And these are the failure modes of your process FEMA. The failure cause of all failure modes shipped through receiving is always gonna be the same and that is the supplier shipped them to you and then in order for you to know that there is no history of the supplier sending out a spec product, there must have been some type of inspection or there must be some controls present that either contains or measures the ability of the supplier to meet the specification. So in essence, we have the failure modes, we have the failure causes, we have the controls, and the fact that the history shows that the supplier to this date has not sent any out of spec product, all you're basically telling me is that the occurrence is one. So bottom line is, if you can make the statement, you actually have done the process FEMA, you just have decided not to document. Another important point when using this particular reason for not including receiving in the process FEMA, is to ask yourself the question, what risk is the process FEMA supposed to assess? Is it just supposed to assess the risk of the failures that you've already seen? Or is it also supposed to anticipate potential failures and assess the risk of your process in containing and mitigating these failures? I believe the second one is true. Consequently, it's very important to ask yourself that even though I have a supplier that is producing in-spec product, if all of a sudden they do not, do I have the necessary controls to keep this failure mode from getting to my customer? I recently did a hybrid vehicle where we identified 140 conditions that could come through the receiving door that could affect the safety of the individual driving the vehicle. The interesting thing was is that at the point in time that we did the FEMA, we had no history of a supplier sending out a spec product. However, we wanted to make sure that if the supplier did send an out-of-spec product, we could contain that failure and prevent injury of someone either riding in or driving our vehicle. There is one time when receiving should not be included in the process FEMA, and that is when the process does not use any parts or materials from outside the process that can affect 
the output of the process.